Hello and welcome to Sick Notes. I've had many people asking me for advice on the coronavirus. Now, I'm not an expert on public health or virology. I'm a junior doctor and I also train medical students. So my knowledge is quite broad, but very shallow. We need to be getting our information at a time like this from places like the World Health Organization and public health institutions. So I'll leave links to these in the description. We previously covered some bad medicine when we looked at alternative cancer cures, and this outbreak of coronavirus has also brought with it a raft of bad medical theories. So much so, Sylvie Bryan, the director of Global Infectious Hazardous Preparedness from the World Health Organization, called the online rumor mill an infodemic. So we're gonna do our bit to dispel some of these online rumors, and thankfully for me, you don't need to be an expert in public health or virology to realize these are ridiculous so let's talk about them first up bleach these are claims circulating online that the 2019 novel coronavirus can be cured by drinking chlorine dioxide a chemical that has previously been linked to other miraculous cures like cancer aids and even autism what's even more ridiculous is that it's often sold under the name miracle mineral solution <laughs> Is someone winding me up here? Just actually like an article from The Onion or something. The thing is, this is a chemical used as a disinfectant, so there's no doubt that it can kill a bunch of stuff. We've all seen those labels on bleach that this product kills 99% of germs. And although chlorine dioxide is not the same as chlorine bleach, but they're pretty much doing the same thing in terms of disinfectant. So it could probably do a pretty good job at killing coronaviruses. But one problem, though, it's going to do a pretty good job of killing you too. Chlorine dioxide is toxic to humans. And according to the FDA experts, drinking the amount recommended on product labels can cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and symptoms of severe dehydration. And being dehydrated when trying to fight a virus would be a huge risk factor for the severity of the illness. There are currently no known cures for the novel coronavirus. Therefore, our treatment in hospital would be supportive. By that, I mean your body fights the virus, but the medical team support your body. We support your respiratory system with things like oxygen and your circulatory system with things like fluids. Therefore, dehydration is very bad. Therefore, chlorine dioxide as a treatment, terrible idea. And it could probably cause some nasty burns as well as it's going through your system. And onto empty plastic bottles on your head. What the hell is this guy doing? Some of the legitimate recommendations are to wash your hands, very good idea, and to prevent touching your face in the area of the T-zone, so around your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. In a way, this kind of plastic bottle is sort of helping stopping you touch your face, but there's a slight issue here. The virus can be transmitted via tiny droplets in the air when an infective person sneezes or coughs, usually within close proximity, around six feet or so. So the only way to stop the droplets getting into this makeshift sort of bubble helmet would be to put a cap on the end of the bottle. This has obvious problems, namely suffocation, which would kill you much faster than any virus could. The World Health Organization do have guidelines on when and how to use face masks, notably if you are healthy and taking care of a person with suspected coronavirus infection, and to wear a mask if you are coughing or sneezing so as to prevent the spread of it. I'll leave links to that information down below. So in India, the president of Hindu Mahasabha, Swami Chakrapani Maharaj, I'm sorry if I pronounced any of that wrong, said consuming cow urine and cow dung will stop the effect of infectious coronavirus. A person who chants Om Namah Shavi and applies cow dung on their body will be saved. I mean, are you freaking kidding me? Has this originated from like a spoof story? I mean, is Outlook India a spoof website? I mean, it looks legit to me. I mean, this is literally bullshit. This comes into the territory of alternative medicine. That is so mad. There won't be anything to disprove it. I mean, how the hell can you do a research trial on the effectiveness of cow waste? I love the fact it's cow dung and urine. I can uh, kind of imagine how that came about. Swami, my friend did everything you asked. They had good quality cow dung but they ended up dying, well, you know, what went wrong? But did they use cow dung and urine? Oh no, just, 
They just used a cow dung. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, there you go. If this isn't mad enough, he also claims a special Yagna ritual will soon be performed to kill coronavirus. Now, I really don't want to offend any religions or cultures, but, you know, that's just not going to do anything. Next up, chicken soup. And <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can edit what I'm about to say out of context to make chicken soup sound like a cure for coronavirus. But let's just understand a few things. We've all had respiratory tract infections caused by viruses before. So coughs and colds, and they are from a variety of different viruses. Rhinovirus, influenza, adenovirus, among others, and even coronavirus. Most of the time these are self-limiting, meaning our bodies are able to fight them on their own. And in viral infections like this, there is some evidence, albeit fairly weak, uh, that chicken soup isn't half bad. And if we think about what we said earlier about supporting the body, the soup is going to provide fluid, which we need more of when we have fevers. It will have salts and proteins, which we tend to get less of as we tend to eat less when we're sick. And the warm vapor can also help loosen some secretions too. And there is also a little bit of evidence that it maybe has some kind of anti-inflammatory effects as well. However, this is not a normal everyday coronavirus. This is a new strain, hence the term novel coronavirus. A strain that's probably come about from an animal reservoir. Uh, so this virus strain have previously only infected a certain type of animal, but has mutated and now has the ability to infect humans, much like bird flu or swine flu previously. Uh, worth noting that SARS, another type of coronavirus, was found to have mutated within bats and then civets before infecting humans. So this new coronavirus strain is more virulent. By that I mean more damaging to our bodies than usual strains of coronavirus our bodies are used to. And if you are unlucky enough to have a severe presentation of it, for example, a pneumonia where the infection gets into the air sacs of the lungs, then no amount of granny's culinary therapy is gonna cut it. That's when we need medical therapy that we were talking about earlier. However, if the presentation is milder, more in line with cold and flu-like symptom, things like chicken soup with its fluid content and nutrition, although wouldn't be considered a cure, would be a pretty good idea to support your body through it. The last one we're gonna look at is the idea of keeping your throat moist. So there is a post on Facebook that's been shared 16 thousand times so goodness knows how many people have actually read it. It claims to be from the Department of Health in the Philippines which it's not. It starts with some sensible advice that antibiotics are not going to be effective. Absolutely true. We know it's a viral infection. Antibiotics only work against bacterial infections. And we often see this kind of approach when we see bad medical advice. It will have a bit of a basis in reality, which kind of gains your trust before coming out with <laughs> these mad theories. The post goes on to say, the prevention method now is to keep your throat moist. Do not let your throat dry up. Thus, do not hold your thirst because once your membrane in your throat is dried, the virus will invade into your body within 10 minutes. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> Airborne viral infections are not altered by the normal daily changes in your mucous membranes. Uh, that's not to say um, drinking lots of water isn't what we should all be doing, staying well hydrated, particularly if we're unwell, we should be drinking lots of water. But as a preventative to infection, there is no evidence for this type of thing. And the danger is people may think this is legitimate advice claiming to be from a public health institution and then take unnecessary risks thinking just because their throat is moist they are protected from the virus and you have to question the motivation of all of these false statements like what are people trying to achieve you know we've had it before where we talked about cancer cures do people believe this nonsense or is it just people kind of wanting attention I mean, these stories certainly generate lots of interest, you know, people looking for information at a time like this, but also to some extent off people's anxieties too. We're obviously taking the mickey out of a lot of these ideas, but the reality is 
These are hugely dangerous pieces of information, particularly when scaled up to the number of views we're seeing here. And they're targeting vulnerable people or people living in fear of this outbreak. The take home message everyone is just the old adage. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is, but I'd also add into the mix, you know, if it sounds as mad as a box of frogs, it probably is too. I end on really what I said at the beginning, make sure you get your information from reputable sources. So I, I'll remind you I have left links to the World Health Organization and public health institutions in the description below. <laughs> I'm not going to link to the websites that contain the false information. <laughs> I don't want someone to kind of accidentally click on the wrong link and suddenly I've endorsed covering yourself in cow dung. For anyone affected by this virus, people that have lost loved ones, people on the front line helping to treat patients, people in the labs working on treatments and people coordinating the response, we are all with you, we are thinking of you. I'll wrap this video up there, I hope you are all well and I'll be back with some more videos soon.